Hi everyone, this is Steve Johnson, and this is part two of the PBVSD EdCamp webinar. Um, we just got done in part one talking about how you can um, connect to the hidden network, the PSK network. And uh, now what we're going to go into is um, management of the Acer devices in your classroom. So I'm going to begin this presentation again. Now, um, one thing you can use the Acer's for is for actually presenting uh, in your classroom, a lot of teachers are finding success and finding it to be effective to use the Acer just as a device. As a matter of fact, when I go to school sites and I uh, give presentations, I really enjoy bringing my Acer laptop around. It works really well. Uh, it has an HDMI uh, uh, cable that I can uh, connect to, and then it also has VGA uh, connections as well. So uh, definitely works in most places around the school district and definitely in your in your own classroom. So here's how you can present from your Acer. First thing you'll do is in the upper right hand corner uh, near where the Wi-Fi signal is you have a, a little icon that looks kind of like a monitor. Uh, it's called display. If, if you were to hover over this on your Acer laptop uh, the word display would pop up. You want to click on that. Um, now uh, here are the steps. Once you click on that display icon um, you're going to want to connect uh, the projector cable, probably a VGA cable, to the laptop. It, it would go into the side of the laptop um, if you have one of the first laptops that were deployed. If you have a newer laptop, um, you will need to plug in um, the HDMI cable. Uh, there's an adapter on it that's connected to the VGA cable that you can connect to the VGA cable in your classroom. And if you have any trouble with this, uh, don't hesitate to ask the C5 teacher at your school site to help uh, show you how to hook the cable up to your Acer device. Um, okay, and then um, if you haven't already, you'd click display, the display button, and then a, a pop down, a drop down screen would appear, and you'd want to uh, click on the text that says configure display settings. Um, once you do that, a box will open up, and um, you'll click on an arrow that's pointing down near the word resolution. And you'll, you'll select this resolution right here, 1024 by 768. Uh, this resolution is best used for projectors across the district. Um, every device, when it gets hooked up to a projector, if its screen resolution is 1024 by 768, it's going to uh, work the best for projecting. Um, there's also a box that says mirror. You're going to want to click that mirror box if you want the projected image on your Acer to, um, to be shown on the, uh, on the screen or on the whiteboard that you're projecting to. Um, now, when you unplug the VGA or HDMI cable from your computer, it will most likely go back to the regular screen. Um, the, the look of the screen will be a little bit um, cut off and shorter uh, when you're in the 1024 by 768 resolution. But when you unplug that cable, it should go back to the normal 1366 by 768. Uh, if it doesn't do that, just go, uh, just follow these steps again from the top, and uh, and you can select 1366 by 768, and the the monitor, the screen, I should say, on your laptop will extend back out to its normal size. Um, okay, laptop management. Uh, here's a picture of the cow, uh, dressed like a cow. Um, there's different ways people manage the laptops in their classrooms. Um, as you can see here, uh, some people have actually numbered the uh, the cord, the charging cord that goes into the devices, uh, as well as numbering the device itself. That's one thing you could do. Um, some people, and this is a little hard to see, so I apologize, but um, some people have put a sticker with a number next to the slot where the cord comes out of. Um, that way they don't have to put the number directly on the cord itself. Um, that's another thing you could do. Uh, here's a place where uh, some teachers prefer to put the number um, when they're numbering their laptops. Uh, in this classroom right here, the teacher has taken out the uh, the case that's actually in the cow and taken out uh, a lot of the, the dividers. As you can see, there's these are little slots right here that the, the dividers would go into. The teacher's taken those out and just um, has numbered, actually, with A1, A2, A3, numbered each of the devices. And then the students, when they come in, they can just easily put the device uh, in this little tray. And then at the end of the day, the teacher takes the tray and puts it back in the cow and charges them himself. Um, so that's how the, teacher, how the students grab the laptops. And here's a picture of this teacher's class.
classroom and the way that he has put stickers on the Acer. So he actually made some uh, pretty official looking stickers. Um, they look really cool. And um, he's just put them right in the center of the top of the Acer. And that uh, makes it really clear and easy to see, and it looks really nice. There's a lot of other management uh, of things to maybe consider. Uh, placement of the cow, you know, somewhere that's easy for the students to uh, get the devices themselves. Uh, or maybe you want to be the one that passes them out and collects them at the end of the day. It all depends. Um, the Acer should last all day without having to be charged. Um, but if the students are using them quite a bit, maybe during lunch, you'll want a procedure for putting the devices away so they can charge for a little bit. Um, you'll find out as you go along which uh, management practices work best for you. Um, but again, your C5 teacher is a really good resource uh, if you have any questions on how best to, um, to pass out the devices and collect the devices at the end of the day or for charging. Uh, okay, let's have a quick PBV Tech uh, quick tip quiz. Um, when you're looking at your keyboard, there are, um, there's a way to copy text on a computer without using your mouse, um, and that would be Control and C. Control C. If you, so if you hold down the button that says CTRL, if you hold that down and then tap C, whatever text is highlighted will be copied. Um, when you're working in Google Apps for Education, that's definitely an important command to know. Um, so how do you paste? How do you paste? A, a lot of people would probably first guess uh, control and the letter P, but control and the letter P is actually for printing. So that's not what you would uh, use for a, little, a command for pasting. What you'd want to use for pasting is control and the letter V. So if you hold control C, you'll copy something. And if you click in a field or on a document and, and tap control and then V, you're going to paste it which is extremely helpful, extremely helpful when using uh, Google Docs and Google Slides. Um, and then lastly, how do you undo something? Let's say you make a mistake and you want to undo it, um, whether it's deleting a message in your Gmail account or deleting something uh, that you didn't want to delete in a document. Uh, you would hold down Control and Z. Control and Z will undo uh, whatever mistake um, that you just made. And it definitely comes in handy, uh, especially when uh, working in a document uh, or on a, a slide or a PowerPoint slide. OK, so you might be asking, well, how do I log into my Google Apps for Education account? Um, well, I suggest uh, using the Chrome browser, but uh, Firefox is also on the Acers. And there's also Internet Explorer probably on your desktop computer that's running Windows. Uh, you want to open up a browser and then type in drive.google.com. Uh, there's actually many ways to get to your Google Apps for Education account. This is one of many. Um, once you go to drive.google.com, you want to put in your username. So your username is going to most likely be uh, the first letter of your first name and then your last name. Um, of course, there could be variations of this, but for my example, it would be S. Johnson and then at pbvusd.k12.ca.us. So you want to put that whole email uh, you'd want to use that whole thing as your username. Uh, now your password for your Google Apps for Education account is the first four letters of your last name with the first letter capitalized and then the last four numbers of your social security number. So no spaces, first four of your last name with the first letter capitalized and the next three lowercase and then the last four of your social and that should get you in. If you have any trouble logging into your Google Apps for Education account, don't hesitate to email support at pbvusd.net. Here's how students would log in. Um, students log in by typing in their first name, underscore, and then their last name, and then at pbvusd.k12.ca.us. Um, this is their email and username. Um, and their password is the first two letters of their last name, lowercase, and then without a space, the six-digit number that they should all know. Um, again, if there are any trouble, if you have any trouble logging students in, don't hesitate to contact me or Kathy at support at pbvsd.net. Okay, um, at this point of the EdCamp, we would have a break, and um, before that, we would uh, kind of poll the people who are there. 
uh, as to who believes they would be best in the beginners group, in the intermediate group, and the advanced group. Um, depending on where people go, uh, they might kind of go over all of these items that you see in front of you at different paces. Some of them they might, might not even get to, like the beginners might not get to all, all of these because we might want to take time going over things they find more important. Uh, but um, these are all the things that could be covered in, in the last uh, portion of the EdCamp, which is the, the biggest portion actually. And those items are Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Calendar, Gmail, uh, Google Drawings, Google Forms and Sheets, which both work very closely together, uh, Google Chrome, the browser, and Google's learning management system, which is called uh, Classroom. So um, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct you to where you can find out more information about Google Drive. Uh, there's really no uh, sense in reinventing the wheel. And we've already made uh, a lot of resources on Teacher's Lounge that uh, talk about Google Drive. So in order to do that, in order to see the, these resources, uh, you would again uh, go to Teacher's Lounge, which I explained how to get there in the first uh, video. Uh, you would click on Programs. You'd click on Google Apps for Education. And then you can click on Helpful GAF Video Tutorials. Now when you do that, um, you'll see that there's videos that start at the very beginning, how to sign in to your PBBSD GAF account, uh, which I just went over with you in this video. Uh, the second video is an overview of Google Drive. Uh, and this is a video that you'd want to watch in order to get a sense of Google Drive. Now, this video does show Google the old version of Google, the old Google Drive experience, um, but you'll get a very similar idea of what the new Google Drive experience is. Um, so, um, and I actually have videos that are on this page. And if you actually click on Google Apps for Education, um, scroll down a bit, uh, the new Google Drive experience, there's explanation of that uh, right here on the second video. So, um, so we definitely explain the Google Drive experience, the new one, um, that's on Teacher's Lounge. Um, but uh, the next thing we're going to talk about at EdCamp is uh, Google Docs uh, so and, and sharing. So how to create a Google Doc and how to share a Google Doc. And uh, fortunately on Teacher's Lounge, if you uh, go to the Google Apps for Education page, again, that's, you click on Programs and then Google Apps for Education. And then if you click on Helpful GAF Video Tutorials, uh, right underneath Overview of Google Drive, uh, there's a video on creating and sharing Google Apps for Education documents. Um, so that is also there, uh, as well as sharing and moving folders and documents, uh, creating and sharing uh, Google Apps for Education folders, which is an advanced tutorial, um, and then again another video for the new Google Drive experience that will kind of, because some of these videos look a little different than what Google, Google's always changing stuff. They're always changing uh, the way that they look, and this is going to continue happening forever. So um, it is good to just keep in mind that some of these videos might uh, not be the most up to date, but they're they're pretty close. So um, if you have any questions about any of this, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, and my email is sjohnson at pbvsd.net. I'd be more than happy to to walk you through any questions you might have. Um, so at, at this part. Uh, during the EdCamp, we would go into Google Slides. Uh, so Google Slides, uh, if you um, log into your Google Drive account, uh, which I'll open another tab right now, and I'll, I'll log in to drive.google.com. Uh, and here it is. I'm already logged in in another uh, browser window, so I'm already logged in now. If you click on New and Google Slides, uh, Google Slides will show up. And this is very similar to PowerPoint. The first thing you'll be prompted to do is to pick a theme. I'll just stay with Simple Light. That's the, the one that's already picked. Uh, just like a Google Doc, you can title uh, slideshows by clicking on the untitled presentation words, and you can rename it. I'll just call this Practice. When I click Enter, it selects OK. Um, and you can add new slides just by clicking the plus sign. You can uh, uh, go to File if you want to download it. Um, you can uh, edit these documents, you can view in different ways, uh, you can insert, 
a text box, an image, a video, um, you can 